Well, congratulations for sticking with me through the story. We're on our last chapter, which is extremely challenging for me to perform. Private Farewell, Chapter 30. Eddie, born Lynn, Massachusetts, Pisces, March 8th, 1924. Cremated in Gaul, October 10th, 2010. He was 85. Well, back to Bombay. Thanks, Eddie, for all those interviews. I'm at the Tom Finn station in Goa, headed back by train to Bombay. And uh, there's three wishes I have before I leave my <laughs> old stomping grounds, Bombay. Uh, one, I want to visit the Dharavi slums, the world's largest slum. Over a million people there. Oh, yeah. That's where they filmed Slum Dog Millionaire. Won the Academy Award. I want to go uh, on a detailed tour of my old hippie neighborhood. I can't, couldn't get anywhere near it uh, coming in uh, two months ago because of the massacre. All, all roadblocked off. Now I want to check it out. And uh, I want to go over to the Cafe Leopold. Uh, it's been open since 1872. I mean, Bombay's a world seaport, and it's been serving great beer and food from all that time. Well, the thing is, a uh, little backstory: The Café Leopold became world famous because of the book Shantaram. Uh, this was a magnus opus uh, of the hippie scene. Fiction, but brilliantly written and uh, you know by uh, Gregory David Roberts uh, he had been busted in Australia for burglary and fl fled to India and uh, lived underground there lived in the Dharavi slums he became a, a self-taught doctor for those people and he often hung out. Many scenes are set in uh, Leopold Cafe. And uh, that's why the terrorists shot it at. They did the same thing over at Osho's Ashram. There was a bakery over there, and the terrorists uh, blew the whole thing up, killed a bunch of hippies and Indian bakers and terrorists targeting hippies. It's come to that. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, so I stepped down, uh, from the platform and, uh, dot our station. <laughs> I discover, uh, roadblocks are gone and, uh, wow, um, Taj Mahal Hotel and Leopold Cafe are open again. They made a point to open up again. You know, they're going to let eight terrorists from Pakistan shut them down. Um. They're open to world travelers again. That's why I can go over and uh, do some interviews. <sighs> Back up in Bombay. Yeah, I reflect. Yeah. My interviews with Eddie naturally faded out when he stopped cooking in the ruins in 1972, just after uh, that uh, New Year's party. And uh, yeah, the golden age of the hippies in India deteriorated, faded out just about then, too. Uh, here's some examples. Uh, in 1973, uh, Nixon uh, bribed the king in Nepal with $40 million uh, to make hashish and marijuana illegal in the country for the first time <laughs> in the history of the world. Uh, why? Um, well, it was like Uncle Sam was this Titanic astral asshole party spoiler. Yeah, gigantic buzz killer. Oh, we were having a lot of fun in Kathmandu. And this kind of remote control spoiled the party. Uncle Sam put his foot down in the Himalayas. If he couldn't get you to go to Vietnam, he'd take your ash away from you in Kathmandu. How pathetic. 
Well, us courageous fish, uh, who got away? Where did we swim? Top of the world, the Himalayas. We made the significant choice, spiritual choice. Ain't going to Vietnam, baby. Hell no, we ain't going. Well, <laughs> 1974, uh, Anjuna Beach got electricity, pole electricity. And uh, 1984, according to Swiss Pascal and others, uh, that's when the police like, oh, let's bust hippies for marijuana and hashish. <laughs> I can make a lot of money off them. Then came the charter flights, talking 70, uh, 87 on that, mass dress tourism, they extended the runway in, in Goa, and it just got, you heard all about that, yeah. Yeah, my reflections of Eddie from birth. Uh, Eddie and I used his own autobiography as our main guide, which Eddie said, uh, let's let's work off that. And uh, yeah, and then we we check things out. And uh, his original book was all uh, <laughs> out of order. So. Um, yeah. So I have to really pass the torch, uh, the bi biography here, torch to other people who known Eight Finger Eddie extensively uh, from uh, 73 to, you know, till his cremation in Goa. Goa Gill, Nikki and Swami. They hung out with Eddie more exclusively in his later years. I could not because. <laughs> I had legally renounced my citizenship and all citizenships in India when I was 24. And ever since then, hmm, international travel is uh, problematic. I can do it, but <laughs> it's difficult on a refugee travel document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ironically, I ended up being a refugee in the country I was born in. And I was born in the Haight-Ashbury less than two miles from the corner of Hayden and Ashbury in 1947. So I kind of became a refugee in the country I was born in. Look, I'm just an earth person to hell with all you government. You know, don't try to define me. I'm an earth person. I'm a human being. <laughs> well, uh, talking about um, Gil Gil, I mean, Eddie and, and, and Gil were close friends. Oh, Eddie talks about Gil so warmly that Gil, Gil came over as a teenager to India from San Francisco. And uh, I met him at the Iran-Afghan border when he was still a teenager. I mean, he's in his 60s now. And uh, he had a guitar with him. And uh, bless him, he bought me a bus ticket to Iran. <laughs> I was absolutely broke, begging my way across the Middle East. What what Eddie appreciated about Gil, he started out on this authentic Zadu trip. I visited him up there in Rishikesh with his guru, uh, Bal Yogi. He had another guru before that. Uh, he lived an authentic Zadu life, and he still is. He still is a powerful, realized yogi. <laughs> and then he... Combine that with his love of music, and he started the rave scene. Uh, what happened was um, some English musicians, Peter Frampton uh, uh, gave some speakers uh, to the, donate them to the hippie scene and go, came over land. And then characters like Gail would get little, little generators, and uh, so they could... They they went electric <laughs> in Goa, and the rave scene became uh, Goa Gill trance dance raves. Uh, g you know, get enlightened, or raise your awareness through dancing, psychedelic dancing. You know, fueled on the good drugs, ecstasy, uh, hashish, LSD, masculine. Yeah, and then Gill exploded. He became a world famous DJ. All over, like the Berlin 
huge uh, peace march, uh, Greek islands. And, uh, Gil and I have maintained a friendship since uh, all these years. He's still doing raves. He did one last summer in Northern California. Yeah. Well, homesick for the golden years. Yeah, I'm homesick. I finally can, can uh, I check into the Bentley Hotel in the old hippie neighborhood. Uh, well, I luxuriate in bed. I mean, I've been living primitive and go at the D'Souza guest house. So I just like sink into this comfy mattress, clean sheets, pillowcases, and uh, I just pass out till noon. Wake up like, oh, I'm refreshed. And Bombay's resting from the massacre, too. Yeah. Oh. Well, I walked down to uh, where I used to live. I actually lived on the street in Bombay for about 10 days on newspapers. So many ankles go by when you live on the street. And, uh, well, I don't know my way around. I hire a... Hmm, boy who's been in some kind of accident, very deformed phase, uh, to be my guide. And he asks if his buddy can come along for the ride. His buddy? Oh, uh, his buddy lives on a little wheeled cart on wheels, a uh, little, little piece of wood on wheels. And he's so deformed that his legs are kind of caught crisscross behind his neck. Kind of like an extreme yoga posture, but that's it. And um, I asked the passersby, how do, you, how do I take a picture of these guys with respect? And the Indian said, look, um, be up front and give them a couple of rupees. So I had really great guys. Mm. Old hippie neighborhood, what's left? <laughs>